What is the future of the Airbus fleet? In the next 20 years, what new aircraft can we expect from Europe's de facto aerospace giant? Today, we will go over what we predict will be the three new aircraft that we will see from Airbus, what they will be like to fly, and how they will impact the world of aviation. So, without further ado, let's fly to the world of tomorrow today. Hey, it's me, Nick here from Found and Explained. If you like this video today, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stick around for more. For the last 40 years, Airbus has been a major influence on the aerospace landscape of the world, especially with the commercial line of aircraft. Since entering the market, the company has come up with various models with all capabilities to fill every niche. However, since then the firm has slowed down with aircraft releases and new aircraft announcements have been few and far between. The most recently new aircraft to come from Airbus is the A321XLR, a long-range narrowbody aircraft that has won orders left and right and will make point-to-point -point travel a breeze like never before, which we'll get to in a future video. But what happens next? What is the next game-changer new aircraft that we can expect from Airbus? The first new aircraft that will enter the market will be more familiar than you may realize, and that will be the Airbus A350neo. That's right, after bringing the Neo series to both the A320 and A330, Airbus will next bring its Neo concept to the popular A350 program. Naturally, the A380neo was also considered, but as the aircraft series is concluded, it is almost impossible that we will see it. But I've done a full video on the A380neo and other A380 variants that we've never seen that you can watch all here on the channel. So what will the A350neo be like? As with the A330neo series, there will be a slight adjustment to the criteria, with two versions of the A350neo focusing on either capacity or range. We will see an increase in passenger capacity to match the capacity of the Boeing 777X, which is around 20 to 40 more passengers than the A350-1000, and fill in the void left in the market from the departure of both the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, a market of around 400 passengers. The other version of the A350neo will be one to match the range requirements of an airline like Qantas for Project Sunrise. You may recall that both Qantas and Singapore operate or plan to operate an A350 for ultra-long haul routes, such as Sydney to London or Singapore to New York. A new Neo A350 would likely take this market into account and will have a range well beyond the current A350-900 ultra long range aircraft. This long range version will have a range over 10,000 nautical miles and fly for 21 hours or longer. The second aircraft that is on Airbus's future plan is a new narrow body clean sheet design. That's right. The Airbus A320 will be no more from 2035 onwards. With Airbus launching a true clean sheet version of the airframe as a replacement. But here's what we predict. The new narrowbody will fill in the A321neo market segment, with an Airbus A220 moving up to a Dash 500 series to help cover the A319 and A320 market. This narrowbody platform could very well be shrunk to fill in an existing A320 demand and stretched upward to fill in a proposed A322 space. This space would be the middle of the market of 250 passengers to a range of 5,000 nautical miles. Miles. Narrow body economics, but in a role filled by wide bodies today. Now, you might be thinking, Nick, this is all well and nice, but this video is theoretical, right? Well, no, Airbus has actually started hiring for two new production lines, and we have an excellent idea of what they are, hence the animations that you have already seen. As for a third aircraft, there are a few different directions that Airbus could go. 
They could enter the turboprop market with a hydrogen or electric aircraft for short-range 70-seater operations of around 2,000 nautical miles, one that has zero emissions to meet the requirements of increased funding, which I'll get to in a second. They have been working on this concept, and it's an area of great interest for the airframe maker as the market segment will only grow, especially in regional Africa. Alternatively, there is a regional middle-of-the-market segment that Airbus could easily take advantage of. This is cheap wide bodies that are designed for shuttle routes. Take for example New York to Chicago or Sydney to Melbourne. With high traffic numbers filmed by narrow bodies, would an aircraft like a small wide body A350 or large capacity A330 Neo work? swapping range for passenger capacity and being cheap enough for airlines to quickly afford. With these double aisles, this will mean a faster turnaround time and more cargo space than what is typically provided by these narrowbody 737s and A320s. So now that you know, you're probably wondering to yourself, what is Airbus waiting for? Well, there are actually two requirements that we know that they need before they can realize any of these new aircraft designs. The first is ultra high bypass jet engines, typically known as the next generation of jet engine design. These engines, like the GE9X on the Boeing 777X, have so much power to weight ratio that planes can fly further and on less fuel. Airbus needs these engines before they can enter the market to ensure that their future generation aircraft can remain competitive to rivals Boeing and Embraer. They obviously don't want to have these new planes operating previous generation jet engines. Airbus expect there to be engines for these airframes in the next five to seven years. Rolls-Royce, Safran and Pratt & Whitney have all said that they're pursuing such designs. The London-based Rolls-Royce firm has earmarked a service entry into 2025 for its ultra-fan model. Whilst France Safran is working on a demonstrator, they'll be ready for ground tests by around 2021 next year. And the last engine manufacturer is also testing a similar upgrade to its geared turbofan and trying to get it out in the next decade. And it's interesting too because Rolls-Royce, who powers the Airbus A350 with its jet engines, doesn't actually supply any engines for the Airbus narrowbody market. Likely they will see this new ultrafan as a way that they can enter back into that space and take a bigger part of the narrowbody market pie. The other task that Airbus is working on is digitizing its production lines and planning to build another two product lines for the A350neo and this new narrowbody, the latter of which will likely be at the old Airbus A380 production facility. They need to test run build rates of 100 narrow bodies as well as 20 Airbus A350neos a month which is around double the current rate of 60 A320s and 10 A350s a month. So before we wrap up today's video, a final question would be if these aircraft will ever be built. For a fact, we know that part of a multi-billion dollar bailout given to Airbus this year includes a commitment to research and develop a new clean sheet aircraft, and also another using a new fuel source with zero emissions by 20 35. Airbus's director of strategy, Antoine Bolivar, has said that this will be an essential effort, saying, we're going from a public R&D budget of 135 million per year to 300 million this year, and then 600 million per year in 2021 and 2022. That's plenty of money to build the aircraft of the future. But a counterpoint to this argument is that Airbus is very confident in its A320neo program, and it seems unlikely that they would want to throw away all of its progress so far with a new narrowbody clean sheet design that is unproven and doesn't have the enormous back orders. Especially with Boeing ironing out the, and I say this with a full understanding of the background of the situation, problems of the Boeing 737 MAX. If Boeing is ready to go toe to toe with Airbus in the narrow body market, then Airbus doesn't want to leave the proverbial market empty 
once it goes off on a new aircraft folly. When asked about the new aircraft of tomorrow, Airbus replied to Bloomberg that, as a leading aircraft manufacturer, we're always looking at ways to advance our product line. There are many studies, but not all see the light of day. But you know what? I have a great feeling about these three aircraft. What do you think? Have we hit the money on the head or are we way off the mark? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're an Airbus engineer and you watch this and you know how close we are to the truth, maybe give us a little bit of a clue. I'll keep an eye out. And if you enjoyed the video today, then I'd love a like and for a subscription. It's free and you can quit anytime. To read more detail about this project and see behind the scenes in today's video, including all the models featured, then check out the website foundandexplained.com. We have quizzes as well where you can try to get a 10 out of 10 result from this video. And then lastly, if you want to support the channel, then we have a fantastic Patreon page that you can check out here. For a few dollars in donations a month, you can get access to topic voting, choosing what comes next on the channel, and explore much more Found and Explained. I'll leave a link down in the description. Thank you again so much for watching.